Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my uh, video on the basics of chemistry. Um, we're going to talk about things like atoms, elements, compounds, mixtures, molecules, you know, the real basics. If you are confident on this stuff, move on. But a lot of people really don't get this stuff. So if that's you, be honest, stick with me, and we'll try and talk you through these basics. Okay, so we are going to start off by talking about atoms. Now, our defin definition of an atom is this. It is the smallest stable particle of matter. Those six words are going to get you a long way. We draw atoms as individual circles like this. Sometimes we might draw them joined together like that, if maybe we're drawing a molecule. But always one of those circles represents an atom. Okay? Atoms are extraordinarily small. They are roughly 1 times 10 to the minus 10 metres. That is like dividing a metre into 100 billion individual chunks that is a the size of an atom another way to think about that roughly 500,000 atoms fit across the width of a single human hair an even madder way to think about it if you made uh, if if atoms were the size of your head then your head would be bigger than jupiter that is the scale of an atom to the size of your head and to the size of jupiter every single thing on earth is made of atoms you're made of atoms, table's made of atoms, air's made of atoms, water's made of atoms, and so on. You get the idea. Okay, so the next question is, what happens when we join atoms together? And the answer is, we get something called molecules. So what are these molecules? Molecules are small particles made of two or more atoms bonded together. And this forms specific separate particles. So let's have a look at some examples of atoms, so uh, molecules. So, for example, water is made of molecules. This group of three atoms there, that is one molecule. And you can see it's like a separate particle. This group here is another water molecule. That group there is another water molecule. And so, and each water molecule is made up of three of those atoms, um, specifically two hydrogens in white and one oxygen in red. Oxygen gas is also made of molecules, and this time, it's made of molecules out of two atoms joined together. And again, we've got three separate molecules here. And finally, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide gas is also an example of something made from molecules. Each of those is made from three atoms, one carbon and two um, oxygens in each case. OK, and again, we've got three molecules. Now, it's not only liquids and gases that can be made of molecules. So, for example, sugar uh, is made up of much bigger molecules that contains about uh, 30 atoms or thereabouts. Um, so that's all a molecule is. It's a particle made of a few atoms joined together and they form these separate specific particles. Now, there are other substances made of atoms joined together, um, but these ones don't really count as molecules. So, for example, if we look at carbon, for example, carbon is made of this kind of pattern of um, uh, carbon atoms arranged in this honeycomb pattern and this pattern just goes on and on so I could extend it like this if I wanted to and the pattern just never stops it repeats for millions of times in every direction so it's not forming kind of separate individual particles it's just forming this overall repeating structure so we wouldn't say that carbon is made from molecules Another example is something like silicon dioxide. This is this substance that glass is made from. And again, it's got this repeating pattern where we've got one of these, um, each of these kind of beige atoms is joined to four of the red ones. And I could continue this pattern in every direction if I wanted to. It just goes on and on and on, right? There's no individual molecule of silicon dioxide, just this great big structure of trillions of atoms all joined together. Okay, so we've seen about atoms and molecules. Now it's time to talk about elements. Now elements are pure substances made up of only one type of atom. And by this word pure, what we mean is that something is the same the whole way through. Okay, so to look at some examples, we've got helium made up only of these pink atoms here. We've got oxygen made up only of these red atoms here and carbon made up only from these black ones. Now, it doesn't matter that our carbons here are all joined together and it doesn't matter that some of our oxygens are joined together. They've still only got one type of atom in them, so they still count as an element. 
And if we compare that to some non-examples like water made up of these red and white atoms in each molecule, or silicon dioxide made up of these red and beige atoms uh, in its structure, those aren't elements because they contain more than one type of atom rather than just the one type because elements only contain one type of atom. We can find all of the elements organized on the periodic table and there are roughly a hundred of these and we're not really likely to discover, any, to, to, to discover any more, certainly not any that are going to have much impact on the world. Okay, so we've seen what elements are, now it's time to talk about compounds and this is where chemistry starts to happen when we make compounds. So a compound, again it's a pure substance, but this time it's made of atoms of two or more elements that have been chemically joined. So if we look at some examples, uh, and, and sorry, they, those must be in a fixed ratio. I'll talk more about what that means in a second, but really we're looking for something like a repeating pattern. That's a way to think about the idea of a fixed ratio. So if we look at some examples, water is a compound because it con contains the white ones and the red ones, that's hydrogens and oxygens joined together. And the, we've got this fixed ratio, it's always two whites to one red. Silicon dioxide, again, is a compound because we've got the compounds, um, the different atoms, different elements joined together in a repeating pattern. So we've got that fixed ratio. If we compare that to some things that don't count as compounds, well, oxygen isn't a compound because there's only one type of atom, just the oxygen atoms. So that's an element. Air is not a compound because although it contains some individual compounds like this one here and that one there we've got lots of different types of particle and they're not present in any kind of fixed ratio so we wouldn't call that a compound and equally this one here this is an example of a solid mixture like a, an alloy a mixture of metals this doesn't count as a compound because although we've got the two different types of atom they're not arranged in a fixed ratio so for example we've got this area over here where we've got a lot more black atoms and this area over here where there's a lot more red atoms. So we would want them alternating kind of red, black, red, black, black, red, uh, black, red, and so on. We'd want some kind of alternating pattern for it to count as a compound. Our final type of substance we're gonna talk about is a mixture. This is the last bit of our basics presentation. So mixtures are substances made from two or more other substances mixed, but not chemically joined for uh, uh, because of this they are impure because they are not the same the whole way through for example air is a mixture made up of these water molecules um, we might have some um, oxygen molecules carbon dioxide molecules nitrogen molecules all jumbled up but they're not in a fixed ratio the composition of air changes from time to time and again we had this metal alloy diagram from before We've got these different substances, but they're not in a fixed ratio. So there are some areas with more blacks and some with more reds, and there's no clear pattern. Okay, things that aren't mixtures, for example, carbon dioxide gas here. That's because we've got these these individual molecules that are all the same as each other. Silicon dioxide. Again, we've got this regular repeating pattern, and we've got a fixed ratio, so it doesn't count as a mixture. Okay. So there we are. That is the end. Well done for admitting that you weren't strong with the basics, but hopefully you're a little bit better now. And if, you, if you're if you not, just watch this back through again and you will get there, I promise.